Welcome to Electron Online, and now let's take a look at something called light spectra. The spectrum of lights depending upon what the light sources are. For example, if we have an incandescent light bulb, and yes, incandescent light bulbs are slowly disappearing. They're all being replaced by those small little curly Q light bulbs, the ones that are like fluorescent, curly fluorescent light bulbs, because they're a lot more uh, energy efficient. But some of us, if still remember the incandescent light bulbs, and if we turn one of those on, the way in which light is produced is it causes current to flow through a very thin little wire that's inside the light bulb and we have Edison to thank for this design because he, th he tried thousands of different materials until he finally found something that didn't burn up because these little, these little curled wires, they get very, very hot and they begin to glow visible light when they get really hot and when we look at the visible light coming from a light bulb like that, from an incandescent light bulb, through what we call a diffraction grating. It's a special little device like a prism that causes light of different colors to bend outward so we can see all the colors in the light. We see a continuous spectrum. Now, it turns out I don't have any yellow markers, so I couldn't put a yellow color in there, but imagine all the various colors of the rainbow, unbroken, so that's called a continuous spectrum. There's no break in there. All the colors of the rainbow are visible. If we now do an experiment where we have a glass tube that contains a certain gas, let's say the gas hydrogen, and we hook it up to a very powerful uh, voltage source like a big transformer, and we put a, a strong current through the uh, bulb that contains the gas, a very strong current with a big potential difference, we cause the electrons to zip through the gas, knocking the electrons in the hydrogen atom out upper uh, higher orbits and as they fall the back down they seem to be emitting um, light of very specific colors only for example we'll see a red light coming there a green light or a turquoise greenish bluish light and a purple light from hydrogen gas if we put a different kind of gas in there we'll get a different kind of spectrum only certain colors that will be coming uh, becoming visible and nowhere we don't see any of the colors uh, normally that we see in the rainbow and that's called an emission spectrum. This particular experiment shows that gases that are being ionized or energized will give off light of only very specific wavelengths and we'll learn later why that is so. So the spectrum from a source like that, a hot ionized gas, we call that an emission spectrum. And finally we have what we call an absorption spectrum. If we have a situation where we have like an incandescent light bulb and we have some gas in between like this and the light goes through the gas. Now, of course, that's not a realistic situation, but I'm thinking more in terms of a star with maybe a nebula in front of it, in terms of astronomy. What happens is that instead of seeing a continuous spectrum like we would expect right here from a light bulb, the specific colors that are normally seen here are being absorbed over there. In other words, as all the, all the photons of the light bulb go through the gas, the ones that match up with the specific wavelength of frequency that are normally emitted by an ionized gas like this appear to be absorbed. So we see a continuous spectrum with certain colors missing, certain colors absorbed, and so we call that an absorption spectrum. And usually that happens when gases are absorbing the normal radiation flowing through them. And that's something that we'll see later on when we talk about the sun and the stars, we see a similar kind of thing. What you just have to realize though that there's diff three different kinds of spectrums. There's a continuous spectrum where we see all the colors of the rainbow continuous, so like from an incandescent light bulb. We see an emission spectrum which usually comes from a gas that's been ionized and only gives light of very specific colors only and none of the rest. And then we have an absorption spectrum where a continuous source or a source that would normally give you a continuous spectrum um, will, some of the light will be absorbed by the gas that intercedes with the energy going through the gas. So what we expect is we see the electromagnetic radiation going through the gas. And as it does, the gas seems to absorb the very same wavelengths and frequencies and colors that normally would be emitted when we ionize that gas, when we excite that gas on its own. For example, if we take this light bulb away and we heat up the gas in some fashion or we give it a certain amount of energy in a particular way, that gas will begin to glow in very specific colors and wavelengths and if we put it in the way of a source that gives you a continuous spectrum you can see that those very same wavelengths are absorbed and therefore we have what we call an absorption spectrum. If you remember those three different kinds of spectrum we'll now go talk, we'll now go have a, we will now show you some videos where this is applicable in astronomy. So if you're interested in this stay tuned and we'll have some more videos for you.